Thank you very much, Giovanni. Um, of course, I'd like to first start by, by thanking you for the invitation and the opportunity to speak today. Uh, it's a big audience. I could see a couple of, uh, of names I, I know, but also a lot I, I don't already. So I'm, I'm very pleased to have the chance to, to describe a bit our activity today. And I thought of, of talking uh, very specifically about uh, one part of our activity related to scanning and microscopy and how that connects to the work uh, uh, happening now in Spintronics and, and, and Petaspin uh, more particularly. Um, to start, just a, a couple words about QNAMI. We are a, a young startup uh, based in, in Switzerland, in Basel. Uh, Basel is this nice city, not too small, not too big at the crossroad between Switzerland, France, and, and Germany. And, and also uh, right at the bottom of that Diamond Valley, uh, I, I like to call it that way. It's, it's where a lot of work, you know, pioneer work on quantum sensors using diamond have happened over the past decade. And uh, I think we, we benefit a lot from that environment. Uh, QNAMI is, is about 12 people now uh, gathering uh, quite a, a range of expertise in, in quantum, both in, in the materials, uh, the software, but also in their application and, and uh, some of it uh, I'll show today. And our mission is, is to support um, the development of quantum technologies and, and, uh, and their uh, transition from, from the lab to the market. So for today, uh, I thought of making a very quick introduction of what is ND magnetometry. Uh, after all, this might still be uh, not well known by everybody in the audience, audience and, and then jump into a, a few examples of applications. So ND magnetometry is, is, is a pretty new field. I think it's been out now for 15, 20 years, depending uh, when you start and count but it already um, uh, applies to a, a number of, of, uh, of uh, segments, sectors, areas, uh, ranging from life science, where there's been demonstration of identification of cells which carried these magnetic labels. Uh, this is now also uh, slowly venturing into, into application, commercial applications. There are companies working on that. Uh, there's been demonstration of using NV centers in diamond for making extremely uh, localized NMR measurements on the nanoscale, measuring neural activity, but also in material science. And, and here I give just a range of examples, uh, measuring spin textures, uh, some magnons and, and spin uh, chemical potential, but also here again, uh, more applied and, and uh, some work in, in, the, in the hard disk drive industry has happened. And I'm adding on, on the right here, some applications which are pursued today uh, for these type of, uh, uh, for these ND centers around navigation through uh, magnetic imaging of the earth field and also in, in brain imaging. So two very promising applications. So, so what is, uh, what is ND magnetometry and, and how it works? Um, so it, it all starts with this atomic defect, uh, the ND center. So for nitrogen vacancy center, which you can find uh, in, in, uh, in diamond crystals. These envy centers have a number of, of very interesting properties and, and one of them, maybe the first one and most obvious one is, is uh, the fluorescence. So when you shine a green laser on this diamond, what you get is red light in return. And this is what you see on this image on the right where every spot here corresponds to one individual envy center. So that's the first very nice characteristics. The second and, and probably even more uh, important for our application here is that it, it carries a spin. Uh, the Envy Center uh, localizes one spin, uh, which is a spin one in, in the ground state. So if we look at this ground state, we have three uh, states, zero, minus one, and plus one. And it turns out that when you shine this green light, you automatically initialize your, your system in this, in this base uh, zero uh, state. The second thing is that this, this zero state is a lot more bright than the other two. Um, so when you're in the zero state, uh, you get a lot of uh, photons from, from your NV center. And when you're in minus or plus one, you get a lot less. And the last thing which is important to notice is, is, is how these energy levels are arranged. So there is a fine structure splaying in, in the gigahertz range between the zero and, and one states. 
And these plus and minus one states further split uh, when you apply a magnetic field. That's the, the very known uh, Zeeman effect. Now, if you look at, at an optical spectrum, so by sweeping some microwave uh, over these transitions and simply look at the, the optical spectrum, you can really figure in which state you are just by looking at the, at, at the uh, number of photons, the photon count rates that you, that you get. And now, when applying an external field, while well, you will track the position of these one and, and plus one and minus states, and this will directly give you a quantitative measurement of the magnetic field, which only depends on this aeromagnetic ratio uh, gamma here. So this is really the core of, of uh, the NV magnetometry uh, principle, this ability to track an ODMR spectrum and measure from these uh, resonances the direct value of the stray field or, or the magnetic field at the position of the NV center. So in, in kind of a short conclusion here, we have a sensor which is both quantitative and extremely sensitive. We're talking uh, of sensitivities in the range of microtesla per second integration time, which, which also means for, um, you know, when you're probing at a distance of about 10 nanometer in this one second integration time, you can detect a single Bohr magneton, you can detect a current which would be in the range of 15 nanoamps or even just 500 nuclei. Um, it is possible uh, to, to manipulate that quantum state in, uh, with a bit more uh, complex sequences that would be coherent manipulation and then you can increase the sensitivity, but none of the application which I'm gonna present today uses uh, that actually. And then the, the other very nice feature which come with, with this type of sensor is that they are self-calibrated and reproducible. Um, the measurement uh, of, the, of the magnetic field uh, only depends on a constant. Uh, and that constant is just the same for one NV center and the next one. Now the last very important feature of these NV centers, and it's gonna be of prime interest for uh, imaging at the nanoscale is that the NV center is, is an atomic defect. So it's, it's kind of the smaller sensor you can think of. And we can leverage that, that size to, to probe very locally the magnetic fields coming from, from a sample. The concept is that uh, we combine the ODMR, ODMR spectroscopy that I have shown just before with scanning probe microscopy and walk this NV center, uh, a single NV center over a surface, record an ODMR spectrum for each pixel and reconstruct a full image of the magnetic field over that surface. Now having a, a single NV center of high quality uh, precisely located uh, at the end of an AFM tip is not an easy thing. It's been an active field of, of research and, and the innovation that uh, QNAMI brings is, is to use um, diamond probes. So probes which are entirely uh, made of diamond uh, so that we can precisely engineer those tips control precisely where the spin, uh, the NV center is gonna be located uh, in, in this case at the very end of that tip and also shape the tip in such a way that the, it, it acts like a photonic waveguide, um, putting all the light in a direction where we can collect, which has an important uh, a consequence for, um, for the sensitivity that, that is achievable. This was uh, work done by, by uh, one of the co-founder of QNAMI, Professor Maditinsky, uh, at the time when he was working in Harvard and is covered by uh, uh, a patent. Of course, now you need the bits and pieces around it. You need an optical uh, microscope, you need the microwave. Um, and, and this is what we've worked at QNAMI over the past two years. Uh, and, and now uh, the, the Proteus Q is, is the first commercial scanning NV microscope that allows you um, to, to, uh, to do such type of measurements in, in a relatively uh, simple fashion, uh, no more complicated than, than scanning probe microscopy in, in general, which has by now become a, a standard uh, type of microscopy. Uh, on the right side here, um, behind my and behind you. Uh, there, there is, uh, you see the, the objective here 
on the left is the, the quantilever with the probe, and on the right is this microwave antenna that we bring close so that we can perform both the, the ODMR uh, spectrum. And here we, we bring uh, the sample. This is now in a position where it's retracted. We would engage and we would scan the sample uh, with this uh, very high quality, robust uh, AFN platform uh, to, to record nanoscale uh, images. So this is uh, essentially how, how this technique work. And, and um, over the past uh, years with, uh, or past month or past year, this product has been launched in the end of 2019. Uh, we have already demonstrated a number of, of, uh, of use cases, and I'd like to focus on, on a couple of them in the second part of this talk. I don't know why I have these yellow stuff. Do you also see? Um, yeah. Um, so the first application, uh, which I'd like to, to highlight, is, is related to uh, antiferromagnetic spintronics. Uh, I'm sure most of you uh, are familiar with that, possibly more than, than I am. Uh, but just as a reminder, antiferromagnets uh, are, are quite special. They have no uh, net magnetic moment. If you look at them from the outside, they don't carry this uh, magnetization, but they do have strong magnetic order. And, and when you look at them closely, uh, you can encode uh, like information in the form of bit zero and one in this magnetic order. Uh, here, the difference, if you look closely at these two boxes, the difference is the first pin here is pointing down and then all the others will gonna alternate in, in every direction. And, and for this bit one, it's just the opposite. So it's the magnetic phase which encode the information. The interest is to overcome some limitations in ferromagnets. Um, you can switch those type of, uh, of bits at, at faster uh, rate in up to the terahertz uh, range. Um, because you have no net moment, you can um, increase the memory density, no problem of, of crosstalks between the bits. And also it's robust to, to, uh, to external fields, which uh, some of you might know is, is one of the challenges the, the MRAM is facing now as it's entering production and finding applications. You can also think of expanding functionality as, for example, uh, controlling fully electrically uh, the, the magnetic textures, and there is even further fundamental interest. Of course, one of the key challenge to move these type of, of uh, materials further is to understand their properties at the nanoscale, in particular as we start and grow thinner and thinner uh, films. So here is a, is a first example of, of a measurement done with a scanning NV microscopy. Um, it's, it, was, um, it was done on a material called uh, chromium oxide. And what you see here is a transition from a phase uh, at high temperature where the, the material is a paramagnet to a phase where it becomes a, an antiferromagnet. So here we do see some structure, some uh, magnetic domains appear and, and this uh, um, observation was actually a possible thanks to the technology. You see that the, 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 the range of, of fields we're talking here is extremely small, fields in, in the micro Tesla range. Uh, that's because in antiferromagnets, only the, the top uh, layer is uncompensated and generates stray fields. Uh, but what you can also see is that the dimension, the lateral dimensions of those domains are extremely small. Uh, so you also need a very high resolution on top of, of the extreme sensitivity. Uh, more recent results on, on the same material, well, on, on similar material, but this time a, a single crystal. Um, in this case, in, in a single crystal, you have typically only have one domain. And in this work, the author artificially create this domain wall uh, across the, the sample through a combination of magnetic and, and, and electric fields. And then using NV magnetometry, they can start and measure uh, this, uh, this domain wall. And in particular here, you see a line cut, which is providing some insights into, into the domain wall width. That's an, a very important parameter uh, to characterize the exchange energy. Of course, here I have to say that um, uh, this uh, measurement that, you know, the value we find here for the width is convoluted with, uh, with the distance between the NV center and the surface. So it's not strictly speaking a, a direct measurement, but it does provide an upper bound 
and, and already some insights in, into this, uh, the physics of these domain walls. In this paper, the, the author actually also evidenced something quite funny. Uh, well, I find it funny. Uh, at least it's, it's, it's nice uh, science, almost textbook science here, even if it's new. Um, they created mesas, which are these tiny structures uh, on top of the surface. And, and you see that on this right image, when the, the domain wall crosses the mesa, you have kind of a shift in, in the anvil, uh, which, which look very much like, like the refraction law in, in optics, and in fact has, has similar ground. Uh, it has to do with minimization of energy of this uh, domain area. Uh, but what you see here is, is really a first result uh, and still a, a textbook example of, of this uh, Snell law for, for domain wall, um, uh, this Snell law for domain walls. Uh, I, I, I think the, the author further show that you can manipulate those domain walls, you can uh, engineer, you can push them around and you can pin them to certain parts of the mesa. In fact, allowing to, to uh, create bits zero and one and, and the author go up uh, as far as, as proposing a new uh, uh, architecture for, for a memory. So I invite you to, to look into this uh, uh, reference for more uh, details. And to finish with chromium oxide, uh, there's been a, a, a memory uh, which was engineered in, a couple of years ago, uh, a fully electric, uh, a fully uh, magnetic RAM that can be uh, manipulated through electrical uh, gates. Uh, I think the rate, I mean, the, the manipulation is still quite slow, uh, but here again, NV magnetometry provided key insights into, into the, the phase of, of, these, uh, uh, mater of these materials. Um, here I'm just giving a snapshot of, of other antiferromagnets. Um, there has been a recent uh, exploration of, of multiferric materials such as the bismuth ferride. Uh, here the idea and, and the demonstration that was made using scanning NV microscopy is that you have a coexistence between antiferromagnetic domains and ferroelectric domains. It's, it's a fairly complicated structure. You have a, a, a this this uh, magnetic spiral, a spin cycloid it's called, and you can see that it bends uh, as, as you cross a ferroelectric domain, which we can see clearly in these pictures. Um, the author further demonstrated that you can manipulate these spin textures with electric field, with, uh, with strain fields. Uh, there is very rich physics, which is just uh, starting to be explored uh, at the moment. Something slightly different um, ar around uh, skirmians. I think uh, the the um, one minute. Sorry. Yes, uh, I'm I'm almost over. Uh, I, I think here th the main point is uh, that in this experiment, people try the researchers try to to have a very non-invasive measurement of those of those very small skirmians uh, in the absence of the external fields. And here. Scanning NV microscopy proved very useful as, a, as an alternative to, to traditional MFM measurements, allowing them to measure those very specific uh, skirmions in this, in this uh, sandwich uh, structure, specific uh, terror structure they built. And my last slide will be for 2D magnets. This is an experiment, uh, kind of a proof of concept experiment, which happened at cryogenic temperatures, but it is really information that you can only obtain with scanning NV microscopy, and this is now becoming an active field of research with a quest for finding such materials that would also work at room temperature. And I do believe that scanning NV microscopy will be a key tool uh, to confirming uh, the, the existence of such, uh, of such materials. So with this, that's my conclusion. Uh, research in spintronics is, is uh, growing, uh, super interesting, both for fundamental and, and applied uh, applications. Scanning NV microscopy provides very unique insights into those new materials. And I think Kunami offers a unique technology and also expertise and know-how. You can come and test our app lab if you want to try your samples. We're happy to explore new, exp new applications with you. And with this, I would like to thank all the people involved in the measurements I've shown here and, and all of you for your attention. <laughs>